Welcome to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology courses. In the Facade Design and General Principles videos, we will touch on the various environmental and functional aspects that will affect the way we design and detail a facade. At a fundamental level, we make buildings to protect us from the elements and make us comfortable despite the prevailing weather conditions outside. People should be the central focus of when considering how we design the built environment. Sustaining life at a most basic level should be our benchmark, expanding out to include emotional, societal and cultural considerations. Technical design should not be seen through a single lens of functional necessity. It is a design exercise first and foremost, with many instances of reciprocal reinforcement of ideas, aesthetics solving technical issues, and technical issues serving aesthetic ambitions. We typically regulate our interaction with the built environment through the clothes we wear, dressing to the prevailing weather conditions and our personal capacity to deal with it. Some people feel the cold and rug up even when the sun is shining. So though while comfort can be defined, it is comfort defined within a range of conditions. The building envelope therefore acts like a second skin to us, though it is not entirely about living in a bubble. Buildings are an intermediate environment and the effects of us being inside space and the activities we perform in buildings dictates to a large degree how we design the envelope. Modern work environments tend to place people into semi-sealed and highly regulated environments. The second skin or buffer between inside and outside is becoming increasingly sophisticated as we try to better balance both the health and well-being of people working within them as well as the overall energy used by the buildings for the health and well-being of the planet more broadly. When we think of the role of buildings at a fundamental level, people typically will say it's there to keep the rain off our head. At a basic level, keeping rain out and managing the way we collect rainwater and how it falls from our buildings is a baseline standard when designing facades. Keeping rain out is simple on one level, however we must appreciate that buildings are assemblies of many things coming together. Where those elements join is a potential point of weakness for the ingress of water. Moisture tends to get into the most unlikely of places. Small gaps with differences in pressure between two sides of a surface can lead to capillary action, which is the tendency for small streams of water to flow through narrow spaces, even against gravity. It is an effect of water's surface tension reacting with a material. In some instances, different materials exacerbate the problem. Being aware of the issue and detailing joints to reduce pressure and encourage water flow back to the external skin are fundamentals of fa facade design at a detail level. Condensation can be equally problem problematic to the surface appearance and durability of materials. Condensation is the opposite of evaporation. It is when water vapour changes state and condenses back into liquid usually when water vapour is cooled. We usually see the effect in winter time when heat from human activity and artificial thermal energy warm internal spaces and increase internal water vapour. We see that water vapour changes state back to liquid on windows as the outside surface of the windows is colder than the inside temperature. Better insulation values of window assemblies and airflow across the internal surface of windows are employed to mitigate this effect. Though less common, we also get condensation on the outside of windows in tropical or humid environments when cold internal air comes in contact with warm moist external air. This is a consequence of sealed highly conditioned spaces that are perhaps too highly geared to cool conditions with a poorly insulated external skin. 
though condensation on the outside of a wall is not as problematic as on the inside, as typically the wall is designed to shed external water. It is indicative to a larger problem of sealed energy intensive buildings in tropical environments. So on one level buildings are like a giant umbrella to keep the rain off. When it comes to the sun it can also be seen as a giant hat. Heat gain from the sun is one of the major issues leading to excessive heat buildup and warming internal environments to uncomfortable levels. Depending on the material, the facade can resist the ingress of thermal energy from the sun, though the insulating properties of the material, as well as other strategies such as reflectance. Not all sun is bad though, as in winter, solar energy can be a major benefit to human comfort without the need for additional heating. Understanding the path of the sun on a daily and seasonal cycle is critical in managing the effects of solar heat gain for good and bad. Manufacturers of glazing assemblies will often use what is commonly termed a solar heat gain coefficient to describe the performance of their windows. Usually a lower solar heat gain coefficient translates to less solar energy transmitted through a window assembly. Thermal energy will tend to flow from hot to cold. The building's skin is our second skin to slow down the rate of heat loss or heat gain. In cold environments where inside temperatures are higher than outside, the insulation value of a wall is intended to slow down the rate of heat loss and thus the amount of energy required to maintain a comfortable internal environment. Equally in hot climates the opposite is in effect, where we try and maintain a cooler internal environment compared to the outside and thus reduce the cooling load, which typically uses more energy than providing heat. A material's capacity to resist heat flow is known as material's conductivity. This is a fixed property of material and is referred to as the K value of a material, represented as the Greek symbol lambda. A good insulating material, which is also a very poor conductor of heat, will have a very low K value, whereas a poor insulating material, which is also a good conductor of heat, will have a high K value. Knowing the conductivity properties of a material is well and good, but what is the effect of using a small or large amount of the material? The thickness of a material will affect the way heat passes through it, which is known as a material's thermal resistance. This is a material's R value, and when we say material, we mean a material of a certain thickness. The R value of a specific thickness of a material is defined as the thickness divided by the thermal conductivity, conductivity or K value of a material. The higher the R value for a certain material and thickness, the better thermal resistance and therefore better insulating properties. Walls and facades are not comprised of only one material though. A brick veneer wall, for example, will consist of a 110mm thick brick with a 50mm air gap, a timber substructure with bulk insulation filling the cavities, a vapour barrier and a final layer of 12.5mm gypsum board. Each of these layers will have a specific R value or thermal resistance. Calculating the effect of these combined R values, we can then compare one wall assembly to another, and this is known as the overall heat transfer coefficient or U-value. The U-value is an inverse of the sum of all R-values that comprise a wall assembly. The effect is that a lower U-value for a wall, the better the insulation value and resistance to heat flow for the wall. When it comes to designing the interface between the external facade or secondary structure and the internal frame or primary structure, 
there are issues when one of the systems penetrates the other. When we think about the facade as a second skin, we can also understand it like a big jacket. If we were in a cold environment with a warm jacket, but we had some holes in it, it does not really matter that the rest of the jacket is warm, as we will still feel cold in those places where the holes are, and we will lose a large amount of heat through those holes. The loss of heat through a building's primary structure is especially problematic in colder climates, as heat flows through materials such as concrete and steel easily. The effect is that heat loss through the fabric can make the perimeter of a building feel cold. This can be an issue for elements such as balconies, over, overhangs or sun hoods that are integrated with the primary structure. Even the connection of aluminium frames to concrete structures can lead to this easy conduction of heat to the outside. This effect is commonly referred to as cold bridging. When we are aware of the issue, we need to consider detailing strategies to mitigate it. Though there are many technical solutions to specific assemblies, they can usually be boiled down to two main strategies, that being isolation, or the other being wrapping. The principle is to maintain the integrity of a building's jacket so that we avoid isolated pockets of heat loss that can significantly drain the heat energy from inside a building. That concludes the first of these videos outlining facade design general principles. Be sure to check in with other videos in the series. Thank you.